Hello everyone. The circuit below is part of the DC-DC boost converter project we discussed previously. This is an EPS circuit, which stands for Emergency Power Supply. In a grid-tied solar power system, when the grid goes down, the system shuts off to ensure safety. The purpose of this module is to automatically activate when the grid power is lost and start the ATS, Automatic Transfer Switch, to switch your household load to use electricity from this EPS module. It ensures that you still have power during a blackout. This feature is typically found in expensive hybrid inverters. However, this module can provide that functionality for more affordable solar power systems. Thank you to JLCPCB for generously sponsoring this video. My projects probably wouldn't have been possible without their support. JLCPCB is one of the leading PCB manufacturers in the world. In addition to PCB manufacturing, they also offer many other services such as 3D printing, PCBA, PCB design services, and more, all at very affordable prices. Additionally, if your project involves many SMD components, consider using JLCPCB's PCBA service. Today is also Mars time using their PCBA service, and I'm extremely satisfied. All components are soldered accurately with clean and shiny solder joints. Using their PCBA service saves me a lot of time and cost. This is the PCB that I previously soldered by hand. There's a lot of leftover flux on the surface, and many components are not properly aligned. Using the PCBA service helps you avoid many of the issues that arise during manual assembly. Back to this project, since this circuit generates quite a lot of heat during operation and uses a cooling fan, I'll prioritize using through-hole components with copper leads. These components are much more resistant to dust and humidity compared to SMD parts. The downside is that they are more expensive and take more time to assemble. With a maximum power output of 3,000 watts, I'll be using a 75 at IGBT rated for 650 volts in the circuit, along with an AT350 optocoupler to drive the IGBT. The optocoupler provides isolation between the high voltage and the control module. In case the IGBT fails, it won't damage the control module. Just replacing the IGBT or the optocoupler is enough to get the circuit working again. These are four genuine AT350 optocouplers. They have an output current of up to 2.5 amps and can operate at frequencies up to 50 kilohertz, making them very suitable for this circuit. Each one costs around $1.5. You should use new genuine components in this position as they play a crucial role in the circuit's overall stability.
This is the main control module of the circuit. It generates four signals to drive the H-bridge, two 50 Hz square wave signals, and two SPWM signals. In addition, it also controls an external LCD screen to display the operating parameters of the circuit. Next, I'll test this module. The input voltage is supplied by the DC-DC module. The circuit can operate with an input voltage ranging from 300 volts to 400 volt DCs. The output is regulated at 2 and 20 volts. It can deliver a continuous maximum power of up to 3 kilowatts, provided there is sufficient cooling. If used under 600 watts, the circuit can operate without a cooling fan. <laughs> 